this demo, I want to go through how to use transparency uh, to make your drawings read clearer. Transparency can be used as a combination with your line weights. They really kind of complement each other. You can use it to kind of fade things into the background uh, and make the, the information that you're trying to convey easier to see. Now, transparency can be set either in the layer or it can also be set in, in a hatch pattern. So you can use, you can use both. And I'm going to show you how to do both of those. The first drawing I want to talk about is this one. And this is a furniture plan, but it's also got electrical information on it. And I found that when you're doing an electrical or a power plan, it's kind of nice to have the furniture uh, kind of fade off into the background. It's still there as a reference, but it's, it's not competing with the electrical uh, information that you're trying to show. So I did a plot of this plan, and let me find this one. And you can see, you know, you can line weights, uh, you know, line weights get you so far. You know, we, you've got the furniture reading a little bit lighter and the electrical outlets are le reading a little bit darker. But you can see in some areas like here or here where the outlets get a little bit lost in the furniture symbol or the plumbing fixture symbol. So let's go into the AutoCAD drawing. And what we want to do is we want to set a transparency in the layer for the furniture and for the plumbing fixture. And to do that, we're just going to go into, I'm on the Home tab, go into the Layer Properties, and we're going to find our A Fern layer right here. And we're going to look for this column that uh, reads Transparency. And right now, by default, everything is set to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust that, and we're going to say, um, I'm going to set it to 60. You can set the value between zero and 90. And the higher the number, the more transparent it is, so the lighter it will be. And it takes a little trial and error sometimes to get the right value for the purpose that you're using it for. Now, I also want to find my plumbing fixture layer and do the same thing. And then I'm going to close out of this. And when you look at the drawing, you can see that the, uh, the furniture and the plumbing fixtures have already kind of faded visually on the screen. So you can see that the transparency setting took effect. So let's make a plot of this and compare it. So we're just going to go into our plot menu here. And I found that the DWG to PDF plotter works better when you're using transparency than using the Adobe PDF plotter. So again, it may take a little trial and error. The other key to when you plot and you want to see transparency is you have to come over to this plot options and make sure that plot transparency is checked. So um, I've already created this plot, so I am going to open that up so that we can see, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And you can see now that these areas where we were concerned before, the electrical information reads much clearer uh, the, the information is still there as far as the furniture and the plumbing fixture, but the outlets really kind of pop out at us. So that's one example of how you can use it. Let me sh close this one here, cancel that. Now another way that you can use uh, the transparency is uh, reflected ceiling plans. It works really well for showing the grid. So I'm going to go into this drawing here, and I'm going to open a print or plot that I made You can see here on the RCP, we're using line weights, so we can see kind of the edge of these soffits, but the light fixtures and the grids are kind of, you know, about the same. And especially if we were using a lay-in fixture, we would really want those to pop out against the grid. Now in this drawing, we also have a flooring hatch pattern that reads a little bit strong. So we're going to try a transparency to see if those will help those, those read better. So I'm going to go into the drawing. And what we want to do, we're going to set the floor pattern. I'm going to go into model here. And we're going to set the floor pattern as a hatch. So I'm going to select this hatch. And I'm going to go in and just do a select similar here so that I get all of it. And what I'm going to do is it opens this hatch um, editor. And so what I want to do is I want to go to the hatch transparency. And I'm going to set this. And I'm going to set it to 70. And then I'm going to close my hatch editor. And then I also wanted to change the, uh, the grid. So that I'm going to do in a layer. So I'm going to open my layers again, just like I did with the furniture plan. And I'm going to look for my A ceiling grid layer. And I'm going to adjust that transparency. And I'm also going to set that to 70. And click OK. And then we'll go 
back into the paper space here. And again, you can start to see the hatch and the grid line uh, fading away a little bit. So when we go into print, again, we want to use that DWG to PDF and make sure this plot transparency is selected. And again, I've made this uh, plot already, so let me just open that one up here. And you can see that it's the hatch is kind of fading into the background a little bit more, and the grid is as well. See how much these light fixtures pop out. And let me open up the, the original drawing again, too. You can see how that's, you know, these, these both are reading much darker. And, you know, it's, it's somewhat of a subtle difference, but it can make a big difference, especially if you have a, a very complicated drawing. And again, here's the trans more transparent one. So now let's see, let's look at another example of how you can do this. I'm going to open another drawing here. And in this drawing, we've got quite a few things going on. We've got some uh, drawings that have a lot of hatch on them. I've also got a floor plan that has hatched in walls. And that's another great place to use transparency because you can still have your hatch, but it makes it easier to see things like dimension ticks. Um, and to see the line work of the wall. So let's open up the plot of the original uh, drawing here. And let me zoom out a little bit here. You can see I've got a lot of floor patterns going on here. And, you know, it starts to get a little bit hard to differentiate some of the furniture. And um, it gets a little bit busy with all the, the hatch. And you can also see that my walls are hatched in black right now. Now, if we go down here to the elevations, you can see there's a lot of hatch going on here. And what I want to do is I want to come in here and take this hatch on the roof and kind of tone it down just a little bit. So I'm going to take that down. I'm going to also take down the floor pattern a little bit, and I'm going to hatch or make the hatch of the wall transparent. So let me open that drawing. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do for the floor pattern, I'm going to do that on the layer as well as for the hatch for the wall. So let me open my layer properties and go into my A floor pattern. And I'm going to set that to 70. And I'm going to look for my A wall hatch new. I'm also going to set that to 70. And then I'm going to close this. And I'm going to go, um, I'm going to select this hatch and set and again, you can set this in the layer as well, but you may have more than one, one hatch on that layer. So I'm going to set that right in the hatch transparency, and I'm going to set that to 70, and then close my hatch editor. And again, right away, you see that fade away. So when I made the plot for this one, and let me, let's see, here we go. You can see now that the um, the hatch for the roof is really starting to fade into the background. Let me zoom out here a little bit and we'll go to the plan. And again, you can see the floor pattern is really, um, you know, it's much more subdued and you can see the furniture pop out a little bit more. You can see the, the room tags. And look at the walls here. You can see that the hatch, while you can still see it and it emphasizes the wall and tells you that this is a new wall if you're using that as your, your key, it doesn't interfere with the other information, and it's not quite as um, quite as bold. Now, one other way you can use hatch. Um, let me go into this one here. I sometimes will use hatch for uh, color coding a plan, and it's nice because you can do it in a subtle way, but you can still see the the colors that you want to use. This is really useful if you're doing a stacking plan or a blocking plan, and you want to show like different departments, how they interrelate, maybe adjacencies. This one, I'm just using it to identify different tenants on this floor. So if I go into um, to plot this, again, find my DWG to PDF, and I'm just going to do a window. And I want to make sure I've got my plot, oh, actually, I'm going to leave my plot transparency off for a second. And if I do a preview now, you can see that the colors come up, and you can still see the information behind it, but they're pretty strong. So let's uh, go back into our plot uh, dialog box here and click on plot transparency and do the same preview. And now you can see those colors have, have kind of faded way back into the, the background. And 
you know, you can still see it, you can still identify which one is which, but it's just a much more subtle effect. So transparency can be a really useful tool to use um, in helping you communicate what you want to show in your drawings.